Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day at 8 a.m. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of valuing Moderna's stock by analyzing their financial ratios and dissecting their financial statements so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Moderna is a biotechnology company. It focuses on drug discovery, drug development, and vaccines. In December 2018, Moderna had the largest biotech IPO in history, raising $600 million for 8% of its shares, implying a valuation of $7.5 billion. From inception to IPO, Moderna reported cumulative losses of $1.5 billion and had raised $3.2 billion in equity. None of its drugs have ever been approved. Its COVID-19 vaccine was submitted for approval and the company's waiting for a decision. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, market cap $56 billion. They're trading at 141 a share and they have 396 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you forecast a future free cash flows and then you discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see the company has negative free cash flow every year and it's quite a big number. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And they also have negative net income every year and it seems to be getting worse. Their sales don't look so great. Revenue was 206 million in 2017, then dropped to 82 million in a trailing 12 months. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue. Below that is their operating expenses. So every year they have negative operating income. That's why they have negative net income each year. The company also has interest they have to pay in their debt, but they don't pay taxes because they're not making any money. This is the statement of cash flows and the top line is the operating cash flow. That's how much money the company generates or loses on its operational business. You can see they lose between 300 and 450 million dollars every single year just from its day-to-day -day business. The company also has a decent amount of capital expenditures. So their free cash flow is operating cash flow minus CapEx, which is on the bottom free cash flow. And if trailing 12 months, that was negative $500 million. Obviously the company needs money from somewhere to run its business. They take out a little debt each year, but it's mostly from capital stock. They raised 1.2 billion in 2018 and half a billion in trailing 12 months. So obviously every time the company uses capital stock, they're diluting their current shareholders. Let's look at the capital structure. They have $132 million of debt and their net debt is negative $971 million. To calculate net debt, it's debt minus cash. That's good that those numbers are negative. That means if they use the cash on their balance sheet to wipe out their debt, they would still have $971 million left over. And they have $1.2 billion of equity and their WAC is 13%. The WAC is the cost of debt and cost of equity, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for that's 13.7 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $12.7 billion. We divide that by 396 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $32. So trading at $141. So they're trading at a 340% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Simply Wall Street values the company at $17. So they're saying it's even more overvalued than me. The way I came up with the valuation is I took what the estimates were for the future cash flows based on their drug production. So if their COVID vaccine gets approved, these are the estimates of how much cash flow they can expect to generate. But COVID won't be here forever. So I assume they would get approval for other drugs as well. And these would be the future cash flows for those drugs. So I did assume a pretty significant cash flow in the future, but the stock price came nowhere as near where they're trading at. So the stock is really overvalued, even in the best case scenario. But you need to understand the stock price is not necessarily based on how well a company's doing financially. It's just based off of supply and demand of the market. If people think the stock price is gonna go up in the future, they'll buy it. And if they think the stock price is gonna go down, they'll sell the stock. So investors are just pushing the price higher and higher because of this whole COVID vaccine. But the profit from the COVID vaccine won't be enough to justify the stock price. In the US, it takes an average of 12 years to get a drug into your medicine cabinet. Because first there needs to be the idea for the drug, then the company needs to do the research and development to come up with the actual drug, then they need to test a drug and provide proof of concept, then it needs to get approved by the FDA, then 
then the company needs to market a drug so doctors and people are aware of it. So this article says only one in 5,000 drugs end up making it to market. And another article says the cost to develop a new drug is $2.6 billion. So there's a huge amount of upfront costs involved in developing drugs, but they also have to make money on all the drugs they didn't develop because they spent all that money on other drugs that didn't actually come to fruition. If you do get a drug approved and it gets into the market, you can make a ton of money, but some companies, including this company, never get a drug approved. Moderna's vaccine was 94% effective and 100% effective against severe diseases. The FDA may approve the drug in mid-December. This vaccine got fast-tracked for obvious reasons, but in a normal situation, it would take many, many years and hundreds of millions of dollars before approval. Moderna has an agreement with the U.S. government to supply 100 million doses for $1.5 billion. Moderna has also agreed to supply vaccines to international governments. It has already received half a billion dollars. Vaccines have generated revenue for biotech companies in the ballpark of $35 billion. And these vaccines save 732,000 lives a year and $295 billion of direct costs and 1.3 trillion in social costs. This is Moderna's current pipeline of vaccine drugs. One of them is in phase two, but the rest are in early stages. They have a Zika vaccine, a respiratory vaccine, an Epstein-Barr virus, and an influenza vaccine. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 13.2, the median is 14.3. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so they have negative PE. Average price of sales is six, median is 2.2. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. They're at 684, so their price of sales ratio is really over the top. The average price to book is 4.6, the median is 2.3. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. They're at almost 48, so they're much worse than the median and average. Equity is assets minus liabilities on the balance sheet. Their tangible book value is the same as their book value, $1.175 billion. So they don't have any intangible assets on their balance sheet. The average interest coverage ratio is 12.8. The median is 3.8. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They have negative EBIT, so they have negative interest coverage ratio. EBIT is earnings before interest and taxes. The average ROE is 10%, the median is 11%. ROE is net income over equity. Negative net income, so they have a negative ROE. Average current ratio is 1.9, the median is 1.3. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They're at 7.9, so they can easily cover their current liabilities. Their current assets are cash of 1.1 billion, and the rest is pretty small relative to their cash amount. So the reason they have so much working capital, 986 million, working capital is current assets minus current liabilities, because the company goes through so much cash to work on its vaccines. So their free cash flow in the trailing 12 months was negative $500 million. So they do have enough working capital to get them through another two years if they have the same negative free cash flow, which I don't think they will because it looks like this COVID vaccine will get approved and they'll start to have positive free cash flow. The best way to look at ratios to compare them with similar companies, I've done videos on Alexion, Axelixis, Insight, Regeneron, Royalty Pharma, Vertex, and Vaxar, all in the same industry as Moderna. And if Moderna has number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. So they're worse in PE because they're negative. Their price to sales is terrible. Price to book is also really bad. They have the highest current ratio of all the companies. The ROE is terrible. They're doing well in debt. They only have 10% debt. And they're a huge company in terms of market cap. Even though they're not generating any money, they still have a high market cap. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 340% premium because even if the COVID vaccine does work, I don't think it's going to generate enough cash flow to justify how high the stock price is. Because in order to keep this $56 billion market cap or raise it, they need to start developing other drugs because the COVID vaccine won't carry the stock price forever. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.